Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Mauritius compliance stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first one is titled, You Want to Lose $100? Alright, sign here. I work in accounting and my assistant is out on this particular day so I'm working on invoicing. While doing invoicing, I come across a work order that has a higher expense amount than invoice amount. Realizing we will be losing $100 on the job instead of at least breaking even, I decide to question the project manager, Chad, about it. Me hey, I noticed this job has an anomaly. Can you explain it to me? Chad what are you talking about? Me see the expenses? They reach a higher total than the amount you want me to bill for. I want to see if that was a mistake or Chad no. It's right. Me if that's right, we're going to lose money on this job. You won't get commission and. Chad I'm telling you it's right. Chad then rips the papers from my hand. See, we charge a 20% markup right here. He points to the wrong spot and has the audacity to look smug. See, it's fine. Me, I calmly take the papers back and show him to two amounts side by side, I see that, but you didn't account for that over here for the billing amount. The total billing amount is less than that. Chad look, it's right and I don't have time to explain it to you. Just do it and stop bothering me. Me no problem, can you just initial here so when our boss asks me why this job is invoiced so low, I can. Chad sure fine, whatever. Signs his name next the billing amount, now get out of my space. I go back to my office and invoice the too low amount. I send it off, fully knowing this was going to backfire, and kept all backups and copies handy for when it did. Next Monday, I have the boss in my office. The invoice in question is in his hand. Boss hey, you did this invoice wrong. Shows me the invoice. Me actually, if you look at the backup, Chad told me that was the invoice amount. I show him where Chad signed off. Boss I'll be right back. He left my office. Roughly an hour later, I get called into the boss office. Chad is there, looking uncomfortable, and my boss is on the phone. He waved me inside and I sat down. Boss all right. We're all here. Now, Tandy Angie, please explain this to me. Me I noticed that the expenses on this invoice were higher than the billing amount. Chad told me that the numbers were fine, and to just do the invoice. Boss hear that Tex. Tex is the subcontractor we used on this job. Tex yup. So what are we gonna do? Boss only thing to do is fire them. They're either incompetent or cheating us. Either way, it's bad for business. I am now very concerned for my job, but I sit silently. I know I don't have the whole story yet. Tex I recon your right. Good luck. And don't worry about the park job. I got an opening up tomorrow I can squeeze in. Boss thanks Tex. He hangs up the phone and turns to Chad. Chad has gone from nervous to mad. Chad it's not my fault she can't do her job. Boss you signed your name right next to the wrong amount. Now you're either working with someone in accounting over in Tex's company to steal from me, or you're too stupid to work here. Which is it? Chad stands, as does my boss. I stood as well, not liking being the only person sitting. Chad says nothing. Boss you're fired. Get your computer and leave. Boss turns to me. Go ahead and fill out the paperwork for his leave. Make sure to add that he attempted to embezzle money. I nod and leave. Chad stays there. As soon as I leave, the office explodes in screaming. I stayed in my office, doing the paperwork my boss asked me to fill out. I saw Chad leave later with his stuff thrown haphazardly into his bag. That was the last time I saw Chad. A friend saw him working at a cash register at a buffet place about a month later. Turns out, both my boss and Tex had agreed to lower their markups for the job so the invoice number was still too high, not too low, but I didn't know that until after the fact when my boss had me redo the paperwork for the entire job. Someone from accounting in Texas company had altered the invoice sent to Chad, and they were planning on splitting the difference after we paid the altered bill. The next one is titled, Paint Line Problem. A couple years ago I worked on a paint line for an auto parts manufacturer. 
We made engine cradles for several different big brands as well as we were commissioned to paint some door panels etc. for some other big brands. My boss, let's call her Karen, was exactly that. A Karen. Her main job was making up paint specs, details for how parts were to be hung in the line. One day she seen me setting up the hooks for some commission parts that were to be hung at the load area in a few minutes, she ran over and started telling me I was hanging the hooks wrong. I knew I was hanging them correctly, she should have known too considering she makes the specs. She insisted I was wrong. So I did what any good worker would do, I followed her orders. About an hour later one of the commission parts got tangled up in a cleaning tank, and crashed the whole line. The funny thing about how this paint line worked was that the oven, to bake on the paint, didn't turn off in the event of a crash. An hour later the line came back up, we scrapped roughly 50 engine cradles that were burnt crispy. Must have costed the company at least $40,000, unfortunately her being a Karen and being the boss, the blame fell on the load team. Nobody was fired so I still call it a win. The next one is titled, Hire the Romanian? Are you sure? This was five years ago, the company I used to work for was a metalworks company in the southeast of England. It had a 40 strong team of fabricators and fitters, we were hiring for an electrical engineer for some automation that we were branching into. I was also the guy training the engineers in what system they would be using. Me equals me boss equals dipstick boss European guy equals ill call him Gav for short supervisor equals workshop supervisor I got word from the supervisor that they had hired a guy and he was from Europe, they warned me to speak slowly and clearly as English wasn't his strong suit. I told them to check his documents to check he can indeed work. I was told to keep my nose out and do my job. When I had spoken to boss he had a thick folder of pictures of electrical systems that he had built for home automation, I was a bit skeptical at first especially as some of the pictures has stock photo plastered over them. I asked him to make sure he was sure about this and if he had done the checks to make sure he was allowed to work. I was told the same thing, keep your nose out of it and do your job. Okay. A month or so goes by and I think he understands how the system works and how it should be used with all of the safety systems in place. So we take him to a site and leave him to do his thing while the rest of the guys get started on fitting security grill and railing all over the site. Me being the sucker I agreed to help the rest of the team with the fitting and finishing. Leaving our new engineer all alone, big mistake, all power on the site cuts out, generator kicks in, all the lights come on and we discover smoke coming from the room where the fuse board is. An oh duck moment has just dawned on everyone. What Gav had decided to do was try and wire in the system to a three phase board without checking the board, standard phase board right next to it, first red flag. This made the situation worse as he somehow blew the entire board up and had to explain to the electrician why he has to install a new board. The second red flag came in the shape of a van filled with immigration officers wanting to speak to Gav about him working when he shouldn't have been. I asked if they had any proof of it being the same guy and indeed it was. I pulled the boss to one side and told him the immigration officers want to talk to Gav and the boss. I could see the terror in his face and panic in his voice as he said, call the new guy in so I can get rid of him fast. I politely reminded him that he should have checked before hiring him, he looked defeated. The immigration officers decide to wait around the corner and just as Gav walked in the van pulls in and swoop onto the poor man and slap him in cuffs. The officers then load him into the van and drive off. A few weeks pass by and the boss thinks he is in the clear. A few weeks later and he is sent a letter telling him to make his way to the nearest home office building. To this day I still don't know what they said to him, as he came back two hours later and closed up the workshop and never reopened. But it turns out he is still paying off a massive fine and couldn't afford to reopen, he was later arrested for tax evasion and fraud. Gav and I became friends and the home office helped him become a British citizen with some help that they offered, so he wasn't removed. Edit, removed the Romanian bit, he might not actually be Romanian, I never bothered asking what nationality he was, not my business, he sounded Romanian and held an EU passport, so I made an assumption. I will know in about 10 to 11 months when he returns to the UK. The next one is titled, tell me the password to your computer. So this happened something like 10 to 11 years ago so details are fuzzy at best. 
quick backstory is that in 2008 with the recession and housing crisis my mum, siblings, and I had to move from Illinois back to Texas in with my mum's parents who had a house large enough for all of us. After about six months my mum decided that it was suddenly okay again for my dad to see and talk to me after three or four years, no longer remember exactly how long, of no contact. I'd been wanting my own computer since the only one we had was an ancient heap of junk that could barely load a single browser tab and had a tendency to crash to desktop if you tried to do more than one thing at a time. Also it was shared between me and my two brothers when it did work and I really wanted something that worked and was my own. My dad, being the exact opposite of all those usual baby boomer memes where they know nothing about technology, is very much a technology and computer guy, decided to build me a desktop computer for my birthday. The thing was a wonderful thing to have compared to our old one and since it was specifically gifted to me, it was all mine and I wasn't forced to share it. I actually still own it and other than having to replace the mouse and keyboard a few times, and the monitor a couple of years ago, it still runs pretty damn well and I use it anytime I have an issue with my laptop. At the same time my dad also helped me set up an email account that we could use to talk to each other when he wasn't in town. Anyway, my mum also loved the thing because it was better than her laptop and managed to get the password to it at some point in time and decided to go snooping through my email account and read through everything I was sending to and from my dad. It was a lot about school and complaining about some of the stupid crap my mum was doing, so basically the usual preteen stuff. She was not happy about me complaining about her to my dad and for a while there was big mess about the emails and my computer and her forcing me to give her access to everything. After a while she either forgot about it or stopped caring or something and I got away with changing the passwords to everything, computer, email, etc., somehow. Other than her snooping a big reason I had a password on the computer was that anytime her laptop broke or had issues she would want to use my computer to fuel her addiction to those stupid Facebook games that were so popular back then, fairly certain she still plays those damn things, and wouldn't let me touch the thing for hours on end if she got on it. Anyway I'd changed the password a couple of times, and ended back on the same password my dad and I had put on it when we first set it up. My mum's laptop was once again broken, which meant she was back to hounding me about giving her the password to my computer. I refused for a while and at some point we were in a Best Buy, not sure why I remember the store but not exactly why we were in one, and she was still witching and whining about how I still hadn't given her my computer password. I think she threatened to ground me or something over the password if I didn't give it to her so I finally gave in, looked at her and said, the current password is the same as it was when I first set up the computer. Or something along those lines. She kind of stared at me for a minute before saying that I still hadn't told her password. I responded with, I did what you said. I told you exactly what the password was without actually giving you the password. I honestly don't remember what the result of this was anymore but I thought I'd share anyway. In case anybody asks how she didn't know the original password if she'd gotten onto the computer before, my mum is one of those people that used to have a sheet of paper with website names, usernames, and passwords printed out and near her computer because otherwise she'd never remember any of her passwords. I think the only reason she doesn't still have one is most computers now have an ability to save that information to themselves. The next one is titled, You Enjoy Your Pool, I'll Enjoy My Weekend. Here's a bit of backstory. Last year I was working for a pool company as a cleaner in a major US city. I did the basic things, cleaning the pools, testing and adjusting chemicals, and making minor repairs and maintaining the equipment. I had a whole roster of clients that I catered to every week and even went out of my way at times to please a client. I also don't get paid an hourly rate, I get paid by the pool. So any courtesy visits I make, I don't get paid for. Cleaning pools can be a very long job during the spring and fall, when everything starts to fall from trees and into the water. This happened right towards the end of spring and we just had a huge series of storms roll through and every single cleaner was a day or two behind in their tasks so we were all preparing to work on Saturday. Large amounts of rain just wreaks havoc on swimming pools, both chemically and with debris. And when we're working in extreme conditions, for example thunder and lightning, we do not use any sort of metal poles for brushing or skimming. I always inform my customers if I can't finish a job due to the weather and offer to come back either later in the week or on Saturday. 
And sure enough one of them takes me up on my offer for a pool that I was unable to finish on Wednesday. Here is our cast, me, EC, entitled customer, manager. Wednesday rolls around and I'm going about my job knocking pool after pool off my list of tasks, while keeping an eye on the weather since storms are still nearby. As I'm pulling up to EC's place to clean her pool, I notice that EC's pool is completely green and developing a nasty algae issue. This happens often when it rains and a pool has a poor chemical balance. As I'm going about my business, I manage to scoop all of the debris from the pool. But before I could start brushing down the sides of the pool, it starts storming, bad. Thunder, lightning, heavy rain, it was crazy. Now EC had informed me before I finished up and left that they were having guests that weekend and they wanted me to brush before I left. Like the idiot that I was back then, I made the very risky decision to quickly pull out the pole and brush down the steps and entrance to EC's pool, not the walls. I also added 9 pounds of shock to the pool to kill any remaining algae left in the water, under normal circumstances I would only add 3 pounds if a pool needed it. Friday's weather conditions were just as bad, but I went back by their place again to check on things as a courtesy to the client. It was getting better, but I still couldn't brush. EC informed me that I don't have to come back and it should be fine for the weekend. Great, I was happy, I already knew I was working on Saturday as I still had an extremely full roster. Saturday morning EC texted my business phone. EC, what time are you going to be by today? My pool looks like crap and we have guests coming over today. Me, I'm sorry, but I have a full roster today with many clients in other towns nearby, but I might be able to make it out later this afternoon. EC, get here by 10 AM or don't bother coming. I will be speaking with your manager about this. Me, I understand if you want to speak to my manager, but I apologize, I won't be able to make it out there by that time. I get to work and my manager pulls me to the side. Manager, hey, EC called and was pretty upset, do you know what their deal is? Me, yeah, their pool is a wreck that I've been tackling all week, but it's been hell with this weather. Manager, yeah, everybody's pools are pretty much like that. Sounds like EC needs a special clean. A special clean is a service we offer that is charged by the hour, but includes much more than what I carry out in my tasks. Me, oh yeah, definitely, but if EC wants me to head back out there, I'm more than happy to this evening when I finish with my other pools. Manager, yeah, but as a favor to me, can you just run out to their place and brush it down and add whatever chemicals are needed? This part is important for later. Me, sure thing, I'll head out right now. I load up my van with the chemicals that I need for that day and head straight to EC's place already upset that I have to work on my day off. When I get there, it looks fine except for the algae on the walls. I give it the best scrubbing I possibly could. When I tested the chemicals, I noticed that the chlorine was extremely low and I knew that if I didn't add chlorine, it would be in the exact same situation it was by the time I came back on Wednesday. So I added about 6 more pounds of shock, just to bring up the chlorine and kill any remaining algae. In the back of my mind, I knew full well that they were having guests over to swim, and I also knew that adding shock would rule out any swimming for the weekend. When I get back to my van, I call EC to inform her of the situation. Me, hey EC, I just wanted to let you know that I scrubbed down your pool so it's looking much better. EC, good, our guests will be here any minute now. Me, awesome, I also tested your chemicals and saw that your chlorine was much too low, so I shocked your pool. Please give it about 24 hours before you swim in it. EC, what? Are you ducking serious? We have guests coming over to swim. You can't do this. Me, I'm sorry, I only did what my manager told me to do, which was what I thought you wanted. EC, I'm going to have you fired. You're so ducking terrible. You need to fix this. Me, I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I was only doing what was requested of me. And the only way to fix it, is to let the pool circulate. EC hangs up and I immediately call my manager to inform him of the impending storm that is about to take place. Me, hey, I just left EC's place and they were pretty upset. Manager, yeah, EC is on the other line, what happened? Me, well, you told me to brush everything down, which I did. You also told me to add whatever chemicals that the pool needed, so I did. I shocked the pool because the chlorine levels were almost non-existent. 
manager, oh yeah, no, you definitely did the right thing, that pool does not need to get as bad as it was. Me, of course, I agree, but I guess they were having a swimming party later that day. Manager, damn, how much shock did you add? Me, about six pounds. Manager, damn, yeah that's going to take the weekend to circulate. EC is pretty upset but I'll handle it. You might not have EC on your roster anymore though. Me, that's fine, they're a headache anyways and I'm tired of bending over backwards for them. I finished up the rest of my pools rather quickly that day and was able to go home and enjoy my weekend. Sure enough, EC was taken off of my roster and I no longer had to service their pool. I've dealt with some pretty crazy pools and clients, but EC was one of the worst. The last one is titled, Want the Whole Bottle? You'll get the whole bottle. So this story was from about 8 years ago so my memory may be a little hazy, so I was 18 male, and working a bar in the town centre somewhere in UK. We're based between two of the grimiest pubs and the clubs in there, so we got a lot of dodgy, rude and drunk patrons on a regular occurrence. One night at around 12am this group of guys comes in wearing suits and I immediately can tell they're pretty drunk and obnoxious. They come to the bar which was about 2 to 3 deep, around 20 to 30 people waiting ahead of them, they start loudly asking for service even though there's people patiently waiting in front of them. Me and my team just roll our eyes and get back to serving people. I get round to serving them and they all shout, finally. So ducking service, what took you so long, I just ignored that comment and asked what they wanted. They then started talking amongst themselves, like they didn't have enough time to work this out while waiting. The ringleader proclaimed that they're going big tonight so want a bottle of Grey Goose Vodka. I said, I can only see you a maximum of a double in any one drink, if you want make it stronger go for it. He ignores the most of what I said and just says, didn't you hear me one bottle of Grey Goose, we can't sell the bottles of spirits under any circumstances. I call the manager up in the back and explain the situation he says exactly what I've already told the customer, so we agreed that if explained one more time about how I had to give them the drink and he just said one bottle again I'd do it. What ring leader didn't realize is that I have the put the whole bottle through as doubles which was about 8.50 per double without any mixes. So this bottle ended up costing him 170 pounds quid before any mixes when it's only 35 pounds quid in the local supermarket. He throws his hands up in the air saying I've ripped him off and he's not going to pay that, why didn't I say anything sooner etc etc, I said that I did and he just fobs me off and goes to walk out. Little does he know I've already asked the bouncers to keep him in the building till he's paid up. His mates laugh at him as he goes white as a sheep realizing he's just spent a lot of money, his friends give him a little bit money to pay help up. Ring leader then spends the night sulking with his 170 pounds bottle of 30 pounds vodka. Edit, someone rightly pointed out I put 12 p.m. which was the afternoon which wasn't the case, I know we like our booze in the UK, but 12 p.m. 20 to 30 deep at the bar gives of a proper alcoholic vibe ha 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 edit 2, after a few people said this is pretty cheap, I decided to do a little digging and spoke to an old work friend so said it was actually around 8 pounds and 50 pence, not 5 pounds and 50 pence. Made the amendments. Thanks for listening.